Welcome to Exploratory Data Analysis with Excel, Part 3, Histograms. In this video, we're going to talk about how to create and use histograms to explore your data in Excel. So if you've gotten to this point prematurely, if you're looking for video number one, just go ahead and click up here in the card, and there'll be a link to the first video in this series. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. You can see here I'm in PowerPoint, and Let's say, hypothetically speaking, you get a collection of numbers. You get a pile of data. Maybe your boss gives it to you, or maybe you pull it from a database, or you get it in an Excel spreadsheet. I don't know. But this collection of numbers here simulates this idea that you're just given a pile of data, and you're asked by somebody, once again, maybe it's your boss, to say, and he asks you, she asks you, make some sense of this data for me. Tell me something about it. So you've got some options in this particular scenario. A very common one, which re will resonate with you as an Excel user, is this. You can calculate the average. You can take all these numbers, add them up, divide by the total number of numbers that you have, and that'll give you what's known as the average, or the, the arithmetic mean. And the average is a wildly useful thing. It is a statistic that characterizes the balance point of all the data. Basically, if you want to think about it, you add up all these, all these values, you divide by the number of values you have, and that essentially gives you a center point that balances all the data. That's what the average conceptually is. And that's a very useful thing. That's one thing you could do with this group of numbers, this pile of data. Another thing that you can do is take a look at the minimum and maximum values. And just eyeballing the data, you could probably tell that the minimum value is zero, and the max value is nine. And that's useful because it gives you some idea of how far spread out the data is. The average tells you, you know, that balance point. It talks about the centrality of the data. You know, where, where is it located? Where is it centered? But looking at the minimum value and the maximum value allows you to get some idea of like how spread out are the values. And in fact, there's a statistic called the range where you take the max value and you subtract the min value from it, and that difference tells you the maximum distance between a min value and the max value, and that is what's known as a measure of dispersion, right? How far apart are the data? And that's a couple things that you can do. Another thing that you can do that's also very, very useful is you can go through all of the data. You can go through all of the individual values and say, what is the count of each value how many times does each value occur in the pile of data? And you can just use a, a table for that. And you can see here I've got a table of the values, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way through. Uh, that should be 9, by the way, not 0. Sorry, that's a bug in this line. It should be 9. And you can see here the counts of the various values. So we have two 9s, not two zeros, 1, 8, 1, 7, two 6s. You have zero fives, interesting. This is what's kind of known as, a statistician would call this a way of understanding the distribution of the data. Not only are we understanding the values that we have, zero through nine, all, but also <laughs> how many of each kind we have, how many of each value do we have, and for example, we have zero fives, and that's potentially interesting. So this is essentially a frequency table. I've got a pile of data. How often does each value occur within that pile of data? And this is an immensely useful thing. A histogram is basically a data visualization of this frequency table. That's all it is. And one piece of terminology that we need before we actually slide over to Excel and create some histograms is this, the concept of bins. And what you can see here is I have used bins corresponding to each individual unique value. A value of zero, zero a value of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Those are the bins. I've defined them based on the individual values, but I don't have to. As we'll see in a second in Excel, I have the ability to change the bins if I would like, and that will change the shape, the look of the histogram. But at base, this is what I want you to remember. The histogram is nothing more than a data visualization of this frequency table. 
let's pop over to Excel and start creating some histograms. Okay, I'm here in Excel, and all I've done is cloned, I've copied the part two worksheet and just renamed it part three histograms. It's all the same data that we saw in video number two. A histogram is a numeric data visualization first and foremost. So you use it with numeric columns of data, numeric features, numeric variables. So for example, we can look at the age column here in the table of data and take a look at the histogram for it. And that'll be quite useful. So what we do is we can highlight the column. I'm just gonna scroll over here to give me some real estate. And what we do is we just go up to insert in the ribbon and we can select this statistics chart option click the down arrow, and we want a histogram. So, voila, we have a histogram right here. What we can see here is essentially the frequency count based on bins. And the bins are denoted right here. As you can see, this bin goes from 0 0.42 up to 6.12 years of age. And the reason why we know that is because we picked the age column, and we've inferred from previous videos that it is the age of the passenger on the Titanic in years. And we can see here that the lowest value, which we saw in video number one, is 0 0.42. And the bin includes every value starting at 0 0.42 up to and including 6.12. And these are the bins. And what we can see here is the frequency counts. So what we can see is that we have 47 values that are in the range, that are in the bin of 0 0.42 up to 6.12. And here's the thing, we can play around with this. We can play around with this. I don't really like these bins. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the bins and see how they're highlighted now. I'm gonna right click and go to format axis. And Excel says, no problem, Dave, you wanna format the axis, no problem. And we get over here, the format axis option. And notice that it's set to automatic. I can change that. For example, let's say I don't want a bin width of 5.7 years. I want a bin width of exactly five years. So I just go ahead and type in five, hit enter, and you'll see that I automatically adjust my histogram. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit bigger just so we have some fun with it. And what we can see here now is we have 44 ages between 0 0.42 and 5.42, right, on the Titanic. And notice that the bin width is now exactly five years. It starts at 0 0.52, you add five years to it, and that's the high end of the bin. And what we can see here is a lot of information. We can see that there's a relative spike in very young passengers in the Titanic, and a good chunk of the data is centered here between, it looks like 15.42, and let's say 40.42. So a big chunk of the passengers are right in this area of the distribution. This is very useful information. Now we can also change the bin width if we want to look at the data a little bit differently. So let's double the bin width from five years to 10 years. So I just go over to the format axis again, click in 10, and notice that it's the same exact data. The data is exactly the same, it hasn't changed. However, now what we see is the shape is a little bit more mound, it's more like a mountain. It's a little bit more pronounced. It's kind of this bell kind of shape, this bell curve kind of shape. But we can see here that our bins are from 0 0.42 to 10.42. And all this tells us essentially is that, yeah, it looks like there is a, a good chunk of people in this range here of 20.42 to 40.42, which is kind of what we saw in the previous histogram. But as you change the bin widths, you get a different visualization. So typically what you do is you play around with the bin widths. And in the business world, this is a little bit easier than you might think because usually you have business subject knowledge that helps you guide what the bin widths should typically be. So for example, in the case of the Titanic, we're interested in exploring this idea that we talked about in the previous video of women and children first. Bin widths of 10 are probably a little bit big for us to explore that idea. So if we go back down to five years of bin width, we get a little bit more information and we can see here, oh yeah, there's quite a bit, uh, relatively speaking, quite a bit of, of children on board the Titanic, at least based on this data set, that are 5.42 years or younger in age. 
And actually we can see here that there's 20 and 19, so there's only 39 between these two bins and 44 in this bin. So what we know is that we're a little bit skewed in terms of children to the very young. So that is a histogram. It's very, very useful, but we can improve upon this. In the last video, I talked about this idea of dimensions, that when we're doing exploratory data analysis, we want to use data visualizations and we want to add as many dimensions as we possibly can. That's usually when we start to see patterns in the data pop. So for example, this is what is known as a univariate data visualization or a single variable or a single dimension. Here, we're just looking at age, that's it, which is useful. Don't get me wrong, it's totally useful. However, it's not as useful in the context of our business question that we're trying to investigate in this series of videos, which is what are the factors in the data that are highly associated with survival? That's what we're trying to figure out. What pieces of data tell us which passengers on the Titanic are more likely to survive than others? And this is useful. This visualization is useful, don't get me wrong, but it's not particularly high powered in terms of answering that business question. So what we would really like to do, for example, is to add another dimension to this histogram. For example, what would be really cool is if we could color code the bars based on, for each age bin, for each bucket of ages, how many of these folks in this age bin survived versus perished. That would be useful for us because remember, we have a working hypothesis of women and children first. And what we anticipate under that working hypothesis is that we would see survival rates for children to be higher than for adults. But we can't tell that from this data visualization. But there's an easy way to do that using pivot charts, and that's what we're gonna do next. So we're gonna add a pivot chart to this worksheet. So I just click in the table here. I'm gonna close that down because I don't need it anymore. And I'm gonna insert a pivot table. And I'm gonna keep it in the existing worksheet. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put it right below the histogram to start with here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this cell right here for the pivot table, and I'm just gonna add it. I'm just gonna scroll down. Okay, we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll to the right here. Boom. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to manufacture a histogram using a bar pivot table bar chart. That's what we're gonna do, a pivot table bar chart, or a bar pivot chart pivot bar chart, I'm not quite sure what the proper terminology is, but we're gonna build a bar chart from a pivot table and we're gonna make it a histogram. That's what we're gonna do, okay. So the first thing that we do is we're gonna go ahead and drag our age down to the rows. And we'll get all the individual ages listed. And what we wanna do is we wanna right click on this and we wanna group it. Because what we wanna do essentially is make the bins. We wanna bin up the data in the pivot table. And we can say, okay, cool, start at 0 0.42, all the way up to 80, that's our min and max ages. And we're gonna go ahead and group by five because that's the bin width that we saw in the histogram earlier. Boom, and you can see here, we get all of our bins. And notice, this is a cool benefit, by the way, of doing it this way. Remember, we were missing ages. We were missing a lot of ages. They were just blank, they were empty. And notice that we get that in this particular visualization, so that's pretty cool. Next up, we're gonna go ahead and add in our new survived for our columns. And then we're gonna drag that to the values. And what you can see here is we've got the counts. This is awesome, okay? Now, all we need to do is go ahead and go up to insert in the ribbon, go over to pivot chart, and we're gonna go ahead and insert a pivot chart. Now, we want a column chart, but what we want is a stacked column chart. This is what we want. This is gonna be super useful for us. And we click OK, and boom, look at that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and actually, I think I'm gonna move this down so we can actually have more real estate with it here. It's gonna be pretty cool. Okay, move this down. And I'm gonna hide some stuff here because we don't need it. I'm gonna hide this, I'm gonna hide this. Get rid of these, we don't want these. Awesome, this is great. So this is a histogram. It's a basically a histogram. Even though we've used a pivot bar chart to make it, it is a histogram. 
And we've added some dimensionality to it, which is really cool. Because now we can see, for example, that, yeah, look at that. The survival rate, because orange means survive. Just, just eyeballing that bar, just eyeballing this bar here, you can see that easily more of the children in this bin survived than perished. And you can see here that that inverts. More folks perish rather than survive as you get older, which is a good indication of women and children first. And we can see here our blanks, so these are our missing ages, and we can see survival rates for those that are missing ages, and we can see here it's maybe mm, third, a little bit less, between a quarter and a third of folks just eyeballing the data. Now this is super, super interesting and super useful. Notice how we added an extra dimension to the histogram and it becomes much more useful to us. But what's really cool is, is that we don't have to stop there. Using the mighty pivot table and pivot charts, we can add slicers. And slicers allows us to do even more cool things. So let's go ahead and insert, and we're gonna go all the way over here, we're gonna add a slicer. And we're gonna add new P class, and we're gonna add sex as slicers. And this is awesome. Awesome. Because now we can say, look, let's take a look at only males. Oof. Oof. Not good. But what we can see here is that the only bright spot in the male data is children. You can see here that very young boys survive, more than 50%. And then we can say, okay, cool. Well, does that vary by P class. So we can say, how about in first class? Oh yeah, look at that. You can see here the survival rates get improved for males in first class, basically across the board. We look at second class, oof. If you're a child in second class, if you're a boy in second class, you basically survive. If you're an adult male, not so much. In third class, same thing. Now what's awesome, of course, is we can go ahead and we can get everything back, and then we can say, let's take a look at females all up. And we can see that generally speaking, females survive much better on the Titanic, but we've already known from video two that it's not equally distributed. So for example, look at first class. Ho, ho, ho. Basically, all women survive, all females survive in first class, irregardless of age. Very few perished. Second class, same thing. Third class, that's where it gets problematic. Once again, notice that very young girls survive disproportionately. And also notice here that blanks, females in third class without an age, survive more than they perished. So this right here shows you the power of data exploration with Excel. Doesn't take much. Throw up a quick pivot table, quick pivot chart, get some slicers, bam, you're getting all kinds of goodness coming out of the data. Now, what would be really useful though, is if we could see something like this all at once. Because you notice here that I just gotta, you know, click the slicers and all this kind of stuff. And I could go through the rigmarole of like trying to create a six different pivot or six different histograms here, which I could totally do, but there's an easier way to do it. And let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, this is what I mean by that. This is a awesome data visualization. Notice that the first row here are all females. And the second row is males. In each column corresponds to a P class. I've got my histogram of age, and I've also got perish versus survive. Notice that this visualization is super powerful. What we had in Excel was great, don't get me wrong, it was awesome. However, this is better because we can see all the data all at once. And it's very, very easy. This data visualization was created in the R programming language. And by the way, I have a online course that teaches Excel users how to create charts like this. And it is very, very easy, by the way. Super easy, anybody can do it with Excel skills. But notice how this multi-dimensional data visualization is so powerful. Because notice that I've got, how many dimensions do I got? I've got age, that's one. I've got sex, that's another. I've got P class, that's a third, and then I've got survival, that's four. So this is a four dimensional data visualization based on histograms. And this is wildly, wildly useful stuff. If you're interested in learning more 
about how to create data visualizations like this. And trust me, if you know Excel, you can learn how to do this. You can click up here or you can check the description below the video. There'll be links to another video on my channel where you can learn more about how you can create data visualizations like this. That's it for video number three, histograms. Use them. Typically don't use them out of the box with just one dimension as we saw in the beginning. You do want multi-dimensional histograms. That's when they become really, really useful. And in the Excel world, that basically means roll your own using a pivot chart with slicers and you're off and running. Next up in video four, we're gonna be talking about box plots, which is a really, really super useful technique. And when that video is ready, it'll show up either here or here on as a, as a link that you can click. And until next time, please stay healthy and I wish you very happy data sleuthing.